Today I'm going to show you our new hibiscus peel. This is one of our feature peels in the new Art of Skin Peel book. And my model today is Lori. Lori has got some sun damaged skin, so she's a perfect model for this peel. Uh, I'm going to begin the process uh, with cleansing and I'm using some glycolic herbal wash, which is one of our most popular treatment room cleansers. And uh, we will be having the information about this up on the screen as I'm working, so you'll also be able to see that. Uh, working the cleanser into her skin really well, uh, without moistening up first. I'm kind of putting it on dry. Uh, this does have 10% glycolic, so, so it can give it a really, really good DD. DD cleansing as I work into the tissue. tissue. Cleansing, cleansing is one of those just important steps, steps to begin a treatment, day care, care regardless of what it is. is the cleansing steps, steps is critical. critical. And, and as, as with peels, how do you prep and prepare that skin, that skin prior to putting your masks on, on is so, so essential. essential. So I've got this worked into the skin. It's tacky now. I can't uh, smooth it anymore. So I'm going to just moisten my fingertips and begin to add water. And as I do that, I create a little lather. So now I'll work this in more. And you can see that probably on camera as it's forming a bit of a lather. Now I did pre-cleanse Lori um, because I wanted to get her very good deep cleansing. I didn't want to take all the time on camera doing that. So just know that you want to spend three to five minutes really working your cleanser in, uh, lathering it up, and um, letting it do its job to dissolve and melt those surface lipids and um, getting the skin just really squeaky clean. And so now I'm going to rinse her using our 4x4s, four four the white gauze. I've just dampened them with warm water and um, I'm going to start by laying the pads, the clean water pads, right on your eyes. It's always good to do this when you go back for removal, no matter what step, because it allows you to kind of protect the eyes, pull away a little bit any of the product that may have gotten around that eye area. A thorough rinse with some good pressure. We want to take our peel today all the way back to the hairline, so it's fine if you have some of the hairline exposed so you're getting an even peel. We're going to take it all the way down the neck to feather out around the decollete area and back into the earlobe. So as you're preparing the skin, you're going to get all of those areas in really well. And do another rinse, flip my gauze over. Notice I'm just going back and using my fingertips to feel her skin and see that I've really gotten that nice skin deep cleansing that I want. You could use tissue or I'm just using a little two by two. Um, you're going to hand your client a fan of this step. It's just good to blot the skin dry after you've done several rinses so that when we apply the next step, the skin is very, very dry and you will not dilute any of your liquid on your next product. So going back, feeling the skin, making sure that you've got all your cleanser off and making sure that the skin is now nice and dry. And Laura, I want you to feel free to talk to me as we go. If there's anything uncomfortable to you or a sensation, uh, please tell me. Okay, so what I want to do now in your protocol, it talks about the cleansing. Glycolic herbal wash was my preference for this. And now I'm going to um, prep her skin just a step further by using the fruit acid botanical. The fruit acid botanical is a great defatter. 
for the skin. Uh, and that's what you want to do is you want to deep fat and um, lift away as many of the lipids and oils that you can that are in the pores of the skin. So it's sort of like a subsurface prep for the skin. Start at your forehead. Ready for pressure. Now if you happen to be somebody who has very dry fingertips or a little sensitive to solutions, or if you're doing this a lot, you may actually want to wear a glove when you apply this. This has a, a solution of 10% combination in acids. It has um, glycolic acid and lactic acid. It's just in a very light serum or water base. So it's a very uh, fast absorbing, hot little mixture. Sometimes the skin will get real warm. I'm sort of doing a double pass here. I went down and then back up on this side. And I can see a little bit of the excess that's now in the skin that wasn't showing up when I did the cleansing. So it tells me I'm getting a deeper um, reduction of oils and fonts. Good. We definitely lifted up some more residue in Lori's skin. It could be makeup that's just been in there that when she cleanses isn't always maybe getting it out. I don't know that. Um, but when we cleansed her with our 4x4s, which is why it's so nice to use these, the second rinse, these were clean. There was nothing showing. And yet when you use your subsurface prep and you go back over the skin, it lifts even more out. And I think you can probably even see the look of the skin as it's changing as I've done this prep. So that's what I mean by a prep. I want the skin defatted and slick and squeaky clean and ready now to take on the acids that I'm going to use. So we'll begin. The first thing I want to do is put some eye pads on Lori. Now that her eyes are covered well, Make sure the ears are covered, kind of got everything protected. Uh, the only orifice that's open area that you have to be aware of is the nose. Uh, so when you come around this area, we're very careful to not get acids and solutions in the nose area. If you're chatting with your client, this is a good time to ask them to be still and to keep the mouth closed so that you don't get some acid in that mouth area. So we're ready to begin and I want to put on my gloves. The first solution I'm using is um, the hibiscus peel. And this is a mixture that has some really great acids in it with the addition of the hibiscus flower acid. And um, I'm going to pour just a little bit of the mixture into the bottle. I probably poured more than we need. You're only going to be applying two layers, so keep that in mind when you're using it. Less is more, and don't put too, too much uh, to you know what you're going to use. Um, I want to go over that just briefly with you in terms of the benefits of this. Um, the other acids that are in this is the phytic acid, pyruvic acid, and mandelic. All three great antioxidant um, acids uh, that help with the repair uh, and rejuvenation of the skin. 
they all support cell turnover, of course, that's the whole idea of the peel. And then your hibiscus, what's so neat about this ingredient is it holds well in a very low pH, and um, in its form, it has phytic acid in it, and it has a high concentration of citric acid. And so the whole formula is based around these very um, potent and powerful, but yet gentle, um, acids that help with not only the aging of the skin and, and pigmentation, but even have antibacterial properties as well. And they have that antioxidant component. Uh, so that's what your hibiscus peel is. And um, we're going to begin by applying a layer of that with a two by two. I'm folding it in half. I'm going to saturate it pretty good with a hibiscus mixture. Giving Lori a fan. In fact, where is the fan? Oh, okay, I see it down there. I'm going to put this on Lori without a fan. Yay, she says. <laughs> uh, but I want you to give me some feedback. Is, is, when you begin to feel this, let me know, and then I'm going to hand you the fan very quickly. But I want to see how long it takes before you start to feel the sensation. So starting at the forehead, come back with even layers. It's a pretty uh, wet, saturated application. You can see the liquid of this, I'm pretty sure, on the camera. Going down across the top of the nose. Make sure when you go down this area that you've got good control of this and no dripping. You don't want anything dripping down to the eye area. Even though we've got them projected, you have to be aware of that. So I'm kind of coming around and getting this area real good. And I'll pick back up here on this side. able to get in here well, there's not enough room. She has enough room for me to hold this well, get in here, and not worry about getting anything in the nose. If that's not the case, you could always use a Q-tip to put that on. And I'm feathering out because I want to make sure I get a nice even peel. And I've still got a pretty good amount of solution on my gauze, and so I'm coming around for the second side. And if you start to see the liquid diminishing, you're not seeing as much on the skin, then re-wet your gauze. Now, tell me, Laura, do you feel anything yet? Um, just a little bit. Just a little, and would you say it's a burning or a prickling? Just a prickling. So she's feeling just a slight prickly sensation, and she's able to do this without a fan. So I'm letting um, all of this absorb. In fact, on this side, it's fully absorbed, and you don't see the wet moisture of the solution anymore. And it's just about gone on this side. So we're doing two layers of, of our hibiscus. And this solution can be used by itself. It just so happens today we're using it with, the, the two, with two formulas. Um, the hibiscus and the flower acid peel, but this can be used by itself for just a light rejuvenation support when you're not trying to get much peeling. It can be done in more layers, and it can be used um, at the beginning of other treatments. So it's a versatile uh, mixture. So what I want to do since I did one layer in one direction is I want to go back this time in the opposite direction so that I get a pretty even application. Now, as much as you can saturate the skin evenly as you're doing um, your, your peels, of course, that's, that's the goal and always very beneficial. And so I'm going kind of in an opposite direction of how I went the first time. And then coming down through the neck area here, where is the first time I came across. And you can see more of the wetness of the solution. This helps you to look and see if there's anything you might have missed. This has lightening properties to it, so I'm going to be supportive. But it would be good to enhance it uh, with another lightener if you were doing it strictly for that. We came in before, so we want to go down. Across the chin, so we're just kind of going down. 
And yes, if she had a, uh, an area where you really couldn't get it, you might ask her to stretch as Lori is this way. It can make it easier for some of you. It all depends on how well you're able to get this bit of gauze around the mouth and around the curves and so forth. You go on one side, one side, you might miss your middle. So we'll make sure you get that. You want to get the top of the nose one more time. Uh, particularly this little area in the forehead where we sometimes form a lot of lines and wrinkles and all right through here. So, no fan. She's still feeling her second layer. It's absorbing. And what do you feel, Roy? Um, it's gone from a one to about a three to three and a half, four. It's getting warm. Okay, well. We don't want to make our clients suffer. Uh, typically, you might just go ahead and have the fan to start so they don't even have to go through that. But I wanted to have uh, Lori feel that and see um, what, you know, what the experience was for her. So you can tell this has some oomph to it. As it works and sits on the skin, it's going to get, uh, get warmer. We want to let this fully absorb, observe the skin, see how she's feeling as we that because the next mixture, which is the flower acid peel, is actually warmer, it's hotter. This can be a, a hot little peel, and I'll explain uh, the differences in each formula and why the flower acid peel is even more warm. Let me know when this subsides for you. I mean, right now, are you accelerating? No, it's actually uh, it's going, going down. To, it's okay. going down. Right, it should really go down. It doesn't stay hot for a long period of time. Um, and by the time you get ready to put your next layer of flower acid peel on the skin, she should be calmed down, ready to take that. So I have already gotten flower acid peel ready to go. I'm going to apply that with a brush. I'm going to give it just a moment. But the real difference in this formula, and well, I don't want to pick up my data sheet with my gloves and everything. Like I'll just tell you. Um, and you will have access to these data sheets to see what it is. And we have all the protocols on how to use this. But the difference in the mixture of the flower acid peel, which I'm about to use, I put it in a small little beaker. I don't know if you all can see that on the camera, but it's a thicker paste. It's quite a bit thicker, whereas your hibiscus was a thin uh, serum type solution. This is like a cream. And uh, the primary difference in this is that it's got the azelaic acid, a very high percentage of azelaic acid. This is what gives this mixture the extra heat, the extra oomph. Um, and so keeping that in mind when you work on this with this again, know that azelaic is going to be working hard for you, along with your phytic, your pyruvic, the mandelic, and the flower acid hibiscus. Okay? So I'm gonna, how are you doing, Lori? Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna apply the creamed based uh, flower acid peel, but don't let the name fool you, it's hot. Okay, this mixture is great for a lot of skins. It is certainly great for pigmentation because the azelaic and mandelic both support that so well. It's also excellent for um, Impure skin, acne prone skin, really helps to kill the bacteria for an acne skin. Both the azelaic and the mandelic work hard for that. The uh, aging skin, photo damaged skin, will do well with this as well because the benefits of those two ingredients, mandelic and azelaic, combined with the phytic and the pyruvic and your hibiscus, all give that potent anti aging, anti antioxidant support to the skin. And so you can see it's a fairly versatile mixture that will do well for you know, a number of skin types. Um, but it is one that can be timed 10 to 20 minutes, and you do want to watch it because not everybody, in fact, most of the time, you put on your protocol um, 10 to 20, but most of the time I'm finding I'm taking it off in 10 minutes. Um, so you watch the skin. You may even see your skin get a little frosting. They may get real pink and 
a lot of erythema. Um, how are you feeling, Lauren? Um, it's about a six. Okay, it really got up there, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Quickly. I want y'all to know I did this on myself when I first created this formula, and I wasn't sure what to expect, and so I put this all over my face, and I left it on for several hours. I mean, I wanted to give it a good shot, right? To see what could happen. And um, I got a phenomenal peel, to say the least. Um, but what I found in doing that, I guess I wanted to just test it to the, to the limits of time, not knowing for sure, because a lot of these acids are self-neutralizing to a point. They do have their end point. And I wanted to see how far I could take it and what was necessary. And so I got a great peel, but then we did it on several other skins right after that for just the 10 and the 20 minute periods. And the results and everything were the same. They got very good, intense peelings. And so it's not necessary to leave this on overnight or for hours for somebody. I don't think that it made that much difference. Okay, you look anything. Go back and check the work. You don't want to leave track marks and miss some areas. And that's why these brushes are so phenomenal. They really work well. The, the, um, bristles or I guess they're not really camel's hair but they're very firm and they're soft and uh, it really will hold your mixture safely. And we have these brushes. She looks good, covered. You feel even everywhere, Lori? Mm -hmm. In other words, you're hot everywhere, huh? Yeah, not, not too crazy, though. Okay, good. Pull the hair back there. We have to peel her hair. Okay, now, 10 minutes is what we want to do. It's probably been on there for about three, two minutes or so as I'm putting it on. In fact, if you all can give me a little uh, feedback on time. So we get ready to watch this and before I remove it. I want to get, leave it on there just long enough. But the real thing at this stage is it gets hotter. And I, I found that sometimes the sun, it got hotter as it sat on longer, which makes perfect sense because it's working to get down in there. And that as the left leg starts to really take hold, and uh, then it can get a real hot surge in the skin. And so, uh, while your client is having this particular step, and you're waiting out those 10 minutes or so, and watching them paying attention to the skin, this is a good time to do a little neck and shoulder massage. Uh, but, oh, I know, I'll use a little omega. This is wonderful for a little massage anyway, the omega fatty acids. And uh, I mix this a lot of times with uh, the Exotica Body Lotion, uh, or the Nurture Balm when I'm doing full neck and shoulder massage. This is going to help take her mind off of the discomfort. So, you know, you're spending those few minutes, uh, why not make it a little more comfortable for them while you're waiting for this peel to work and do, you know, do its job. And, uh, you guys can kind of let me know the, the time on this. And we have, we will have up here, we have up here, uh, an image of our new uh, Art of Skin Peel uh, ebook that we have available. Uh, you'll be seeing that on the screen. And this protocol is actually available um, in that particular book. We just created that with all the new peels as well as some uh, revamps of our old peels, and so it would be a really useful uh, tool for you.
doing massage like this reduces the pain by about half anyway. Considering I'm one that's had pills for many years, as you all know, I can remember um, having them so many years ago and, and someone would do it and you know, work on my shoulders while I was going through the hot phase. It made a huge difference. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Lori Skin has had the um, fluorescent paste. I refer to this as a paste. I think that's kind of what it's like. Uh, she's had it on for 10 minutes. She's feeling pretty hot. Skin is a little tender right now. And so we're going to, to begin our removal. Uh, but I want to go ahead and take her eye pads off uh, first so that I can really moisten around her whole face with the water, not have these in the way. So let's take those off for you. Now give you a chance to open your eyes a little bit. Now if you do that, if you take the eye pads off before you remove this paste, make sure you do like I said where you uh, start at the eyes and you can move out. So I'm going to take my 4x4s and I'm going to moisten them into some water that's um, kind of tepid. It's not very hot. It's almost on the order of cool. And uh, moving around the eyes and then coming out. And you have to use some firm pressure to get this off well. Of course the skin is feeling a little hot, or tender, let them keep the fan. It'll feel good to have that. I try to move quickly and firmly, but you know, you've got to get all this mixture on. You can see how it kind of all can sort of form together. It gets a little thick. Now you don't breathe. Just remember those nice deep breaths through the nose. Start to ease up here in a minute. Now she didn't frost up. A lot of people will frost with this peel at this stage. And, and um, she could have probably had this on the 20 minutes. But you don't have to necessarily go for that, for that frosting. Okay. How you doing? Are we hot? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. yeah. Just remember to breathe. Now, she was pre prepared psychologically for this. I'll make sure you do that. I warned her. I said this is one of her hotter ones, this little step. Um, so that makes a big difference, how well you get them on board with you. Um, getting them to know what, what you're going to go through. Now at this point I'm just trying to water, 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 not as much rubbing. You can stand them up and put them in the shower. It will feel good to do that. Go ahead and open your eyes. That feels better probably than are you easing up any? It's a little warm. Oh, no, around the uh, nose. Uh huh. Yeah, the, you know. Make sure I got all that off. It looks like she's off good. So I want to. Oh, that's what you frosted right there. And that's probably why that's a little more tender. Check back into the hairline now. Make sure you use your fingertips if you need to. So if you've got this kind of off, feel the skin. I can still feel a little bit of the mixture on the neck area. I am going to be finishing her with uh, our Sea Gems. Sea Gems is really good to take that uh, sting out of the skin. It starts to feel real good and cool to the skin. But you don't want to do that before you get all that off. In fact, I'm going to give these a good rinse. They're just a little...
had ice globes, and uh, would be very appropriate right here to go ahead and roll the ice globes over the skin. And that would be very soothing to your client. We want to put some pro Set on the lips. That would feel good. Okay, it feels good. I mean, I've got everything off, but you don't want to keep touching the skin very much. I mean, I'm testing to see if I have it off. I don't want to keep wiping because her skin is it's tender. So just making sure that you have uh, all of you. You'll feel this uh, paste. I mean, you can feel it on the skin. There's some left. So you want to. That's why you go across the skin. Make sure you get it all up. Since it's clear, it's not something you can see always real easily. And, uh, so she's good. Rinsed well. Uh, still hot. And um, you could also spray it down on your client with oxygen. Those of you who have Pro2 systems, I, I love that. We normally use it. We just didn't include it for time's sake today. But I'm a big fan of oxygen, and uh, it will certainly make the skin feel very good. And then you could apply your C gems right over the skin. And uh, so I'm putting C gems on now to see if that gives her some comfort and helps to. It's a thermal reducer. It starts to uh, give the skin some good nourishment very quickly. This and our Arnica therapy would be very soothing and good to use on the skin, either one. Sometimes you may put both on, but you don't want to do too much to the skin. Less, less is more. And I always like to let them continue to hold the fan. Um, the, good. Did that help? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. does have a tendency to really just sort of help to not, not everything, of course. You're supposed to have had some sensations, but it does quite a bit to soothe the cold skin. And I want to put a little bit of our pro sand on her lips, around her eyes, and make it feel good. She's all set, she's all finished. She's got her C gems on for just a little balancing and to reduce heat. She's got her lips with a little sound and occluded, so she's got not, they're not feeling dry. Everything is removed. Um, if she were going outside and it was daytime, I would suggest you have your client wear sunscreen. Try to book your peels around the weather a little bit so that they come at the end of the day, early morning. Make sure they don't get into a hot car, open the door for them. So open the door for them and let it air out loose so they're not getting so much heat. Because a hot car in the summer is like an oven. And you want to make sure you're paying attention to temperatures and, and exposure when you do this type of peel. Really, no matter what time of the year it is, even the winter times, the harsh cold can affect the skin. So you just want to keep all that in mind. But that completes our... Um, Flower acid peel, I would expect Lori to start peeling in about three days, and she's going to have what we consider our mid-depth, uh, aggressive flaking type of peel is what she will actually see in terms of physical peeling, and it's going to overall just rejuvenate her skin and give her a much more uh, youthful, refined look to the skin tissue and help to repair some of this photo aging. And so that today is the using our hibiscus peel solution with our flower acid paste to create what we call a flower acid peel. Thank you.